Welcome to The Radiant Woman. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about key foods to build your estrogen, both from a Western and Eastern perspective, and how you can support um, healthy estrogen through midlife, menopause, uh, and prevent some of the symptoms we commonly associate with midlife and menopause, which they're common, but they're not inevitable. So what you can do to prevent any of the uh, abnormal decreases in estrogen. So welcome, Radiant Woman. This is the Radiant Woman channel. Uh, my name is Angela Warburton. I am a practitioner of over 25 years of clinical work supporting women at all stages of life, but in particular midlife and menopause. My background is in Eastern medicine, applied mindfulness. Uh, I bring the science and the soul of menopause and the body back. So really integrating this whole person approach to midlife and menopause. So helping you to navigate it with more grace, with more ease, helping you to understand your body, what's actually going on in the changes, how you can read the symptoms, and then most importantly, what you can do about it. So I'm here as a practitioner, but I'm also here as a woman because I am a woman who is postmenopausal and I had my own experience of menopause and I am really noticing that we have a very um, not healthy relationship with what this stage of, of midlife transition means and what's possible on the other side. So I'm here as, uh, as a woman and, and offering you all the tools and wisdom that I have. So happy to see you here. So today let's talk about one of the key hormones that's um, really important for women in general, because it's the primary hormone that, that differentiates women from men, though men do have estrogen. Um, but it is one that we see often that goes in rapid decline around midlife and menopause. And when it's off of balance, when we have this real, really strong imbalance, that's where we see a lot of symptoms that people associate or women associate with an uncomfortable menopause. So, um, and I'll, where do I want to start? Okay. So estrogen is a very juicy hormone. So it is the primary feminine hormone. It, it adds the plumpness to our skin. It's the, um, you know, it's, we'd say in Chinese medicine, it's the most yin hormone and it needs, uh, we need it. This is what brings, you know, I won't, I'm not going to go into too much of what it, what it does, but what, um, I will tell you is when it's deficient, it's going to show up in certain ways when we're out of balance. So if we don't have enough estrogen, it's going to show up in our hair. It's going to be really flat. If you're noticing premature aging of your skin or just a lot of wrinkles, um, that can be a sign of estrogen deficiency, dry skin, hello, belly fat, uh, brain fog, chronic pain, or if you've noticed that old injuries are creeping back in, sometimes that, that can be a sign that our, that your estrogen is actually deficient. And so, um, you can do so many things to help keep your estrogen levels healthy and normal, and you can be actually eating in ways that are going to support your estrogen levels as well. And I just want to make a note here that there are many stages to hormones, to, to actually having, to helping to support your body, to increase the hormones in your system. And it's not just, um, especially if we're working from a very natural perspective, hormones, um, there are many systems in the body that it's essential to work and have healthy in order for these hormones to uh, show up and be available. So first you need to eat to build it. So you need to actually put the right foods in what we're going to talk about shortly. You need to have a healthy gut. So the gut actually breaks down the um, foods into a usable form for the, your cells so that they're able to absorb them. And then you need to make sure that you're not eating foods with high toxins in them, because that's actually going to block the receptors. Um, and almost like when you eat foods from like having things in a lot of with stored in plastic, if you use foods with a lot of pesticides, um, different toxins that come in through beauty products, that's actually going to congest your liver, which is really important for processing, um, both getting rid of excess hormones, but making your hormones available to go out into the bloodstream. And then um, you have a little receptor and the hormone floats around and you have a receptor and that's where it's going to make it available to your body. When you have a lot of toxins in your system, it's like putting um, cling wrap or saran wrap over 
your receptor so the hormone can't actually attach. And so that's really important as, as your, um, not only your gut, but your bowel. So making sure you're getting rid of any excess hormones. So all of those are really important. So not only what you eat, but um, your stress levels, your gut functioning, all, um, all those things are really important to having healthy hormones. So that's just a note. I'll do other talks on that, but just so you know. Um, so estrogen, so it says juicy hormone, it's going to help keep this, our skin nice and um, plump. We're going to feel good. We're going to help decrease um, extra body, fat, um, belly fat. Just so you know, fat, fat actually has slight estrogenic effect. And so the body, when it's trying to regulate estrogen, will hold on to more fat to try to get that. So that's why we want to make sure that we're not going into sort of hormonal overdraft. And if you're interested in some of the things about the nervous system, check out my previous videos as well. So let's talk about some things that actually help to build the estrogen. Because it's a very juicy, very, um, it, we'd say it's part of the blood system as well in Chinese medicine, you want foods that are going to be he like healthy fats, rich, oily foods are actually going to help to build your estrogen, nuts and seeds, um, uh, high fat foods, like things with, um, like healthy olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, all those healthy fats are going to be helpful foods prepared in a watery medium. So when we're deficient in estrogen, we're going to be dry. Our skin's going to be dry. It's going to look dry. We're going to have wrinkles. So we want to make sure that we have enough fluid in our system and healthy fluid. So fresh cold pressed juices, soups, broths, all those foods are going to help put nutrients back in and help build that watery medium. Seaweeds um, are really helpful for building as well. This is very Eastern medicine. Any excuse me, dark um, leafy greens help to clean out the liver and build the blood as well. Eggs um, are really helpful. Uh, cold water, oily fish, really helpful as well. Raspberries um, are good as well. Cherries, beets, um, I said cold pressed juices, green juices, those are all really helpful to build your estrogen. The best nuts and seeds, um, are Brazil nuts, almonds, cashews, walnuts, pine nuts, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds are really helpful in particular. Some legumes are really helpful as well. And the legumes are really nice because they help to keep the bowels, like lots of healthy fiber as well. So keeping the bowels moving. So chickpeas, lentils, soybeans, uh, kidney beans, chickpeas, all, I already said chickpeas, um, uh, all really great. And soybeans, you can have soy in other forms like tempeh, tofu, even um, organic soy milk. I'm not a fan of any kind of soy isolates, any kind of fake meat made with soy. I'd always want you to keep to the most whole form of soybeans um, to get the benefits from that. Uh, some other fruits, strawberries, blueberries, cranberries, cherries, I already mentioned, really helpful. Spinach is a really great green. So if you're dry, spinach, if you think when you look at a food when you cook it and spinach when you cook spinach there's a ton of water that comes out of it it adds a lot of moisture back into the system green foods also their structure if you look at how it's uh, the actual structure of a, of chlorophyll rich foods they have the exact same structure as a red blood cell red blood cell has iron as its center adam but and green foods have magnesium but they're both mag green foods are actually going to build the blood and build that more juicy estrogen friendly um, side of what you're looking for um, some other veggies that are really helpful to uh, onions garlic zucchini again a really moist wet um, when you cook it, a lot of moisture comes out of it. Um, zucchini is another great vegetable. Broccoli and ca cauliflower are also really, really helpful for building. Um, and then to expand out of your food, so you want to make sure you're eating well, that your gut's actually absorbing, that your stress, um, your liver is functioning well. That's the organ we see in Chinese medicine or the system that affects our stress levels a lot, our ability to handle stress. And so it's really important that not, you're not only eating well, but you're actually living in a way that is allowing your body to go out of a stress state. We have a very stressful world sometimes with the busyness, there's to-do lists, just navigating traffic, 
just being pulled all over the place. And so it's very easy to be living in a constant state of stress. So many women I know are feeling like they're constantly behind the ball, like trying, I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I can't rest now because I've got to get my to-do list is too long. Your to-do list is always going to be long. You're never going to get it, never going to get it done. I'm sorry to break that too. So it's essential that you find these moments in your day. And I know everyone's busy, but I guarantee you, you have five minutes, you have a minute, you have 10 minutes. You can find these little micro moments to reset your nervous system, to stop, to just breathe. If you want to know some really great calming activities you can do in literally a minute or two check out my my other videos on parasympathetic calming um, ways to calm your nervous system but you want in general in chinese medicine we say there's yin and yang everything's falling into the two categories and they're constantly moving from one to the other estrogen is part of the yin side of things that's more of our rest and digest our more calm state you really need to be doing things that are going to support that. So um, just getting enough sleep is important, but things that are more passive versus active ways, we have an, a very information rich, time, like um, a, a world where we get a lot of information, whether it be scrolling, consuming content, social media, whatever it is that you're taking information in. So you need to, to find ways where you're just actually not consuming information, but just being. So time in nature, have a tea or your morning coffee or after dinner, sit, if you can sit outside, especially in the summer, sit outside. Um, and just be, just watch nature, uh, restorative yoga versus a hot yoga, just listening to music versus scrolling or watching Netflix, just little things and just allowing yourself to calm down um, and to reset your system. And the more you can put yourself into that relaxed state, the better you're going to feel, the, you're going to use up fewer resources, you're going to um, remind your body that you're safe and that you're calm. And this is, I'd say, hands down, the number one thing I see affecting modern women is this chronic state of fight or flight and moving and doing and busy, 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 busy all the time. And when we go into busy, we're basically going into energetic um, and hormonal overdraft. We're using up our juicy hormones like estrogen to produce more cortisol to get more done. And so it's the state of constantly overusing that we will end up seeing symptoms we associate with menopause. So the more you can remind yourself that you're safe, that you can take these little micro breaks, one minute, two minutes, do a resetting tool, just <sighs> take a moment, feel your feet on the ground, just take in your surroundings. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? This take a moment, let your mind and your body come back into alignment. Ah, <sighs> okay, there I am. And then restart again. And the longer breaks you can take, the better. But even if it's these micro breaks multiple times through your day, you're going to notice a difference, I promise you. So building your estrogen means reminding your system that you're safe, taking these rest breaks, creating space to just be, and then eating foods that are going to naturally support and nourish and build your estrogen. And you're going to feel over time, if you are eating some of these foods, you're definitely going to notice a difference. So um, there you go. Quick and fast and, and furious, well, not furious, fast and nourishing, hopefully, um, some tools to help you build and reset your estrogen. If you like this video, please like it. And if you like more content like this, hit subscribe and uh, please forward on to anyone that you think might benefit from this. I'm here to help serve all you midlife women and helping you thrive during menopause and beyond. And I'm really here to help you live your most radiant life because you are a radiant woman and you should feel good. So thank you for being here and have a beautiful day or evening.